Good day and welcome back to my channel. This is a somewhat short one simply because I was asked about this model um, while I was working on a different kit and uh, some folks actually uh, found the review of this thing like in, in my ancient history. So uh, while I was working on one of my kits, this particular one was something I just sort of was tinkering around with at the, uh, you know, while I was waiting for other things to dry, etc. So this was the, um, at the time, Delta Quadrant 1 144th Archer Scout. I think this is from the Seeker, uh, um, it was the Seeker novels. Uh, um, I'll actually put a caption here because I am not remembering it. And uh, I only got this kit because it looked cool, right? It's 144 scale. So it's, you know, you can see the doors here. You know, so those are standard Starfleet doors. Um, so that gives you an idea of the size and the scale of this thing. So it's kind of cool. The, it comes with, it came with two things. It came with this drawing and it came with this instruction on how to put in the optional landing gear and what to do about the um, nacelles. So the nacelles were made so that it didn't matter whether you put them on, on the you know port or starboard side. So they had extra holes and the idea was they give you another one of these and the theory was what you would do is you'd use that to fill the hole and then gap it. Um, I chose to just sort of put interesting things in there and leave it just because it's what I wanted to do. Uh, this is the my rendition of it. I did do wheels, wheels, skids down simply because I'm I didn't want to put this. This is not a light kit. This is this is all resin. The um, primary hull or the hull is hollow, but this is how these are solid. So. With all of those things being solid, this is not light. And, you know, putting this on a flight stand would have been moderately challenging. So, and, you know, I like the idea of landed. So I did do skids down. Um, I will also add that I did not use the landing gear that they came with. The landing gear had was very, very thin. We're talking, this is maybe three millimeters. And it comes down here. And you can see that I put it so that it extends out to the back, and that's because all of the this weight here, the center of gravity, um, is about here. So with with those landing gear landing here, this thing was just butt heavy. So it was a tail dragger. Um, I used some pieces that I had and created something that to my eye, and for those of you who are Star Trek purists, um, apologize for the squeakiness, but to my eye, this looks like something that will fold up and in, not unlike the Voyager landing gear where they sort of fold in on each other. So it has a decent look to it. Yes, I can look at that and go, where the heck does it go when it folds in? But this is a spaceship, it's sci-fi, and that does not break my aesthetic. So <laughs> it works for me. Um, I also chose not to light this. These were um, clear, well, actually frosted clear resin. However, I did have an issue. One of them broke. So you can see it there, but it's a small enough break that when this is on display, unless I'm looking at it or you know sticking a little mirror under it, I don't see it, and I'm okay with that. But it does mean that I couldn't light it. Now, this is lightable. You can just drill this out, drill through here, and then there's enough space in here for you to run wiring and so forth up to there. So if you did get this, this is lightable. Um, other than that, you know, it, it's a very, very nice kit. I do not know that it is available anywhere from anyone. Uh, this was originally in one of the Federation models options for Delta Quadrant. And, you know, a lot of what Federation models had there is sort of... Um, no longer available but looking out and about you know you may find that somebody has this or maybe this will be redone or maybe there's a at this point or by now somebody who's done a 3d printed version giving that everybody's going down a 3d printed uh, 
route. This has some curves though, so the uh, 3D print would probably have some challenge with these sloping curves, but you know, a good one, you can just sign those up. But I did want to go ahead, I, I was asked to say, hey, what's this thing look like when it's done? So this is what mine looks like. I did go through, chipped up the landing gear, kind of gave it a used look, and yes, I did put streaks and so forth on it. Still doing a little bit of, of weathering on it, and I know, you know, Star Trek, are usually you don't have a whole lot of dirt, but this is a scout ship. This is an atmospheric ship. It is designed to be, and I've not read the book, um, I've not read these books, although I might just for the interest of it. Um, this is the Archer class, but I believe the star of the shows is the SS Sagittarius. So I think if you look up on the Google, the USS Sagittarius, you will find that is the the, the ship for, for the um, for the series of books that are there. But anyway, that's it. This is that model kit. And, and the result, my, my result of putting it together. Um, I liked it. It was cool. If you ever do manage to find a way to get your hands on one, I highly recommend it. Um, this thing's going to go on a shelf now. And it was a nice distraction while I was working on something completely different and, you know, just thinking about other things. But um, there you go. This is the Archer class starship from Delta Quadrant at the time. Um, resin kit and one one forty four scale. Uh hope this is interesting enough and you know for those of you who are wondering about this model. Uh until later. Until next time I'll say happy modeling and thank you.